We need to go out there. We need to play tough. We need to f it up. We win together, we lose together, we rise and we fall. LFL football night has arrived to New England. Hey fans, welcome inside the booth of LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza, Bobby Huco, as always. Here we are in the Eastern Conference. We've got a pair of winless teams. New England coming in at 0-2. The Bliss at 0-1. We'll talk about New England in a second, but let's talk about Chicago Bliss football. The real story around this team has got to be the play of their quarterback, Jacinda Barclay. Absolutely. They lost Heather Furr. She won two titles for him you know, a couple years ago. They brought Barkley in from Australia. This girl can throw, and she can run with the best of them. The problem is she's new to Chicago, new to that Chicago offense. She's been studying the last couple weeks. I'm really looking to see how she plays tonight. Now, let's stay on that offensive side of the ball for Chicago. There's a big name missing from the lineup tonight, Christelle Harris. Talk to us about Christelle. Christelle, the Ferrari Harris, arguably, I think, the best running back ever in the history of the LFL. She's out tonight. She got nicked up in the last game on the first play of the game. But if it was the playoffs, she'd play tonight. Coach Keith Hack said she would play if it was the playoffs. But they're playing Javel Thompson. She can fly a good runner. It's going to give her a lot of experience tonight. Looking forward to watch her also. Giving her some reps against an expansion team in the New England Liberty. Now let's talk about the Liberty. Again, a team that's 0-2, has struggled on both sides of the football. The bright spot has got to be Alex Drake, the first-year quarterback, really heralded in the offseason, came into this season, has the gun, can get it down the field, has limited mobility. But the real challenge for her, you being a former NFL quarterback that played with not so great of a team, you didn't have a lot of weapons around you. Talk to us about the frustration of not having those weapons as a quarterback. Back. Well, that's it. Her attitude is great. You're right. She doesn't have a lot of help around her. She's got all kinds of skills. I really think in a couple years she will be an elite LFL quarterback. She can fire it anywhere on the field. She can make all the throws. She can run also. Just doesn't have a lot of help around her tonight. I don't know how they're going to do, but she's a great player. Now, there is one weapon there to look for. Kristen Beckman up here in New England. They like their slot receivers. They think she's a Julian Edelman type. We'll see how that plays out. And that will bring us to the end of the pregame show here in Manchester, New Hampshire. We bring you back for the first half kickoff. It's the New England Liberty hosting the Chicago Bliss. Kickoff is next. Back to LFL football night here in Manchester, New Hampshire. The Chicago Bliss versus the New England Liberty. Really looking forward to this game. Both quarterbacks, up-and-comers. We got Jacinda Barkley for Chicago. She's from Australia. I'm really anxious to see how she plays on her first series, Mitch. We will get to see Jacinda Barkley here shortly. That kickoff by Alex Drake sailing out of bounds. Chicago will start from the 15-yard line. And speaking of 15, there are her numbers. Jacinda Barkley, as you mentioned, an LFL Australia transplant. Now part of this very blue-collar offense. Her first game against the champ, Seattle, she played well until the fourth quarter when she struggled a little bit. But she has this offense under her wing now. She's been studying the last couple weeks with Coach Keith Hack, and we'll see how she plays. Barkley throwing for three touchdown passes and two interceptions on the season. And Chicago will open it up early down the field. That is A.J. Johnson. And that's our first score of the night. Wow, just like that, bam, a streak route, a nine route. Jacinda Barkley threw it perfectly to A.J. Johnson. I'm surprised that Donnie Williams, the coach of New England, went to a man coverage on the first play of the game. He told me he was going to go cover two to protect against plays like this. That secondary of New England, very suspect. Not a notable person at the safety or corner position, and A.J. Johnson is one of those rookie receivers that is really coming on in this league. No, she looked great on that play. You're right, Tessa Alexandria, the safety, she went after the running back, Javel Thompson, leaving nobody out there. Astrid Cruz was on an island, and A.J. Johnson went flying right by her. Alexandria is a converted middle linebacker, now moving to the secondary and paying the price. That's Javel Thompson stopped by Danielle Green. Our score will remain six to nothing Chicago. Not how the New England Liberty won to start out their home games. This is their first game at home ever. First play of the game, bam, touchdown for Chicago. Chicago only needing one play from scrimmage, connecting on a 35-yard touchdown. And now we get a look at the young gun, Alex Drake. Really solid numbers for a rookie, 17 out of 28, already completing 60% of her passes. She looks good. She's going to have to have a game like that tonight to beat Chicago. From the shotgun, a first and 10 play. Look at the pressure on the young Drake early. 
evading the rush. Will only manage a yard, but that could have been disastrous early. Alex Drake showing some mobility. Let's now meet the starters for New England. Jolie Fezikai, wide receiver. Kristen Beckman, wide receiver. Lulu Jackson, tight end. Samantha Puckett, tight end. Rachel Murphy, center. Astrid Cruz, running back. Alex Drake, quarterback. Quarterback Alex Drake is going to need some help tonight to be successful. Running back Astrid Cruz needs to play big. Now a second and nine play. That is a quick screen to Kristen Beckman. Beckman, a big part of this offense. In fact, coming up with seven receptions for 58 yards versus Austin. And that is not a good sign for New England fans. That is Beckman down on the ground. Not at all. That is their star receiver. It was a well-designed play. Vezekai with a great downfield block to open up Beckman, but she looks hurt. This is not good for New England. Beckman, that slot receiver, they're targeting her with those possession-type passes. If they do not have her services tonight, they're going to be very thin at the wide receiver position. Absolutely. She is their only deep threat. This is bad for them. Early in the game, looks like she's out. Jole Efezuka is the only other receiver they have on the depth chart. Now a third and three play for New England. From the shotgun, that is a handoff. That looks to be Danielle Green, the power back. Check that, that is Astrid Cruz. And Cruz gaining nine yards. That'll be enough for a New England first down. We look to now have a media timeout. Alex Drake in New England driving. Like your favorite LFL players and teams and receive breaking news stories, the LFL's official Facebook page, facebook.com slash mylfl. Back to LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco as the New England Liberty now face a first and ten. Faking the handoff now. Drake in a lot of trouble and just dumping it off to Astrid Cruz. That was a dangerous shovel pass. And New England will lose a pair of yards. Very dangerous. It was a read option. She should have handed it to Cruz the first time. There was a hole there. We meet the defensive starters for Chicago. Dominique Collins, cornerback. Tamar Fennell, lockdown, corner. Kim Perez, strong safety. JaVale Thompson, free safety. Kristen Morrison, linebacker. Chantel Taylor, your beat. Jasmine Caleb, defensive end. Watch those all-fantasy league defensive ends, Chantel Taylor and Yashi Rice. They'll be teeing off against the rookie tonight. A second and 12 now for Alex Drake down the field, and that is intercepted. Kim Perez coming up from the safety position and playing with a broken finger. We just spoke about that defensive line off the edge. There's serious pressure on Drake. She hurries up, fires right into cover. Just a bad pass. Kim Perez right there, cast and all, makes a great play. Perez, one of the veterans on this roster, and has been one of the keepsakes of Chicago, maintaining players, developing through the year, and you see that blue-collar mentality of Kim Perez playing with a broken finger. Kim Perez and Tamar Fennell, the strong safety, make one of the best safety combinations in the league. Tough to throw against, and there's a rookie going right at him, and she gets picked off. Now Jacinda Barkley and the Chicago offense taking over. A first and 10 play, dropping back to pass and nearly losing the ball, Astrid Cruz, with a great open field tackle. Barkley actually had a lot of time. She got happy feet. She stepped up in the pocket, nothing there. Great coverage by the secondary. Let's meet the starters for Chicago on offense. AJ Johnson, wide receiver. Samara Fennell, wide receiver. Ava May Gamble, tight end. Tina Fagiano, tight end. Stephanie Murray, center. Ferrari Harris, B, running back. Jacinda Barclay, quarterback. It's going to be really interesting to watch running back Javel Thompson and how she plays tonight, replacing Chris Del Harris. Barkley under center. The crowd coming in a bit. She's going to take off with it, has a lane, and slammed against the boards by Jessica Johnson. 
but not before picking up 13 yards. What a physical play here. We've got Jacinda Barkley mic'd up. Listen in. What a hit there by Jessica Johnson. Barkley showing the wheels that she has, but that was, what a hit on the sideline, wow. Barkley, one of the more tougher quarterbacks in this league. That is why she fits in very well with this blue collar system of head coach Keith Hack. It's a blue collar system, but she has a much better arm than Heather Furr had in the years before. A first and 10 play for Barkley. Big time pressure up the middle by Danielle Green. Pass will fall incomplete. Let's meet the starters for New England. Heidi Simmons, cornerback. Astrid Cruz, cornerback. Jessica Johnson, strong safety. Kenya McKeon, safety. Tessa Alexandria, middle linebacker. Jolie Fezekai, defensive end. Lulu Jackson, defensive end. One on one, right? The key to that defense is middle linebacker Danielle Green. She has to keep that heat on Barkley all night long, just like she did. A second and 10 play. Barkley back to throw. Green rushing up the middle again. And that is intercepted, Jessica Johnson. And I don't know why she's not continuing to run. I don't think anybody touched Johnson. You're 100% right. I don't understand that. That's all coaching right there. Nobody touches her. She's gonna ran in the end zone. A bad play by Barkley. She tried to fight for some time. Nobody open. Excellent catch by Johnson. But you're right, nobody touches her. It looked like she may have trapped that. We will see if head coach Keith Hack challenges, but he seems to be content with the call. Going back to that, I think you run that all the way back to the end zone and again, allow your coaches to try to challenge the call. Absolutely right. Jessica Johnson made a great play on the ball, but nobody touched her. That would have been six points for New England. The defense for New England coming up big after it was backed up inside its own red zone. Now a first and 10 play ball at the six yard line. That is a design keeper by Alex Drake. Nothing doing, only a one yard gain tackled by Kristen Morrison. They like to keep the ball in her hand. She's a great runner, but she got no help up front. In fact, Cruz missed her drop block and none of the linemen stayed with their blocks. No gain there. We got a quick look there at Kristen Morrison. That's DeAndre Fry, but the middle linebacker for Chicago they feel very good about the rookie starting in a legendary position for Chicago football. Coach Keith Hack, all he did all week long was rave about her. Said she's gonna become an all fantasy player really quick. Second and nine now for the New England defense. Ball remains at the seven yard line. That is a draw play to Astrid Cruz. And that is Kim Perez and Yashi Rice coming up on the tackle. There was a huge hole open by center Rachel Murphy for the backs. Cruz could have walked through there with a Mack truck. Looked like if she could have got in the fifth gear, it was going to be a big gainer. But one of the best pursuit players in the league, Kim Perez, came out of nowhere. A third and three play. That is another draw play. Oh, absolutely shoved against the sticks. Kenya McKeon gaining four yards. Dominique Collins out of nowhere, bam! Welcome to the LFL, rookie. Kenya McKeon, give her credit, she held on to the ball after being slammed against the down markers. Now a first and 10 for this New England offense, doing exactly what they need, hold on to the ball and move the sticks. I know that Keith Hack cannot be happy what's going on right now, only six nothing, New England's looking pretty good. Another draw play to Astrid Cruz. That front line looking very impressive as New England gains seven on that carry. They brought the safeties up. Kim Perez was right there. Not a big game, but Keith Hack is not happy at all right now. Coach Hack, also the defensive coordinator for Chicago, takes pride in developing a very physical defense that is now being pushed around by an expansion franchise. Smart play calling by Donnie Williams. He's staying away from Yashi Rice and Chantel Taylor and going right up the middle. There's another attempt with a draw play up the middle. This time Chicago adjusting. No gain on the play. That is Kim Perez and we've got a flag. This could be an unsportsmanlike call on Chicago. 
I think Chantel Taylor took a cheap shot at Samantha Puckett. Chantel Taylor, she tries an old-fashioned head slap against Samantha Puckett. Watch this. Watch the head slap. She missed. Can there be a penalty on a miss? I think an attempt is as bad as a connection, and they're going to give her the unsportsmanlike. That'll cost Chicago 10 yards. That is not a happy Keith Hack. All right, first of all, first of all, all right, I'll be very, I'll be very blunt. You dumb f up the full house already. Already. Full house. You're supposed to bump down. You're supposed to bump down, right? If nobody's across from you, bump the f down. No, what are you doing? You're standing out there picking your f with nobody over there. You mother are supposed to bump down. Bump. No, you're not bumping down. There's a f gap like this. Full house, wide receiver on this side. That defensive back bumps down. You bump down. You bump down. You're not doing it. Yes. He's taking it outside every time. I know. You guys, I swear to God, I swear, if they score a point, you are going to pay for it at practice on Wednesday. I swear to God. Stop making stupid penalties. Be smart. They got 10 players. You're letting them drive on you. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Dean. Come on. Keith Hack is 100% right. He has a defensive scheme put in for this team specifically to bump down, to cover the holes, all the gaps. They're not doing it. And then on top of that, the veteran, Chantel Taylor, gets an unsportsmanlike penalty. Not good football. New England showing a lot of life on this drive. From the shotgun, Drake looking to the end zone. Outstanding pass here. Watch this. F is okay. Six feet one tall. Throw it up high. She comes down with a great catch. A poor play by Kim Perez. She came up. They went right over the top. And look at Keith Hack just fuming. After that talk on the sidelines, it did not resonate. And give a lot of credit to Alex Drake hanging in the pocket and finding F is okay. Excellent pass, 6-1 receiver, throw it up so she can go after it, she brings it down. Now the one-point attempt from the one-yard line, handoff to Astrid Cruz. Cruz showing some good speed to get to the outside. Good blocking on the edge, Cruz walks in. Who would have called this one right now? New England 7, Chicago 6, wow. A six-play, 44-yard drive kept alive by a pair of costly penalties on the Chicago defense. I would not want to be at practice next week if I was a Chicago defensive player. Keith Hack is about as unhappy as I've ever seen him right now. That is Barkley back to pass. Has a receiver. That is A.J. Johnson. And Johnson horse collar down to the ground by Jessica Johnson. That'll be a penalty on New England, and that score should stand. That touchdown will stand. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Throw it up top to Johnson against Johnson. I just don't understand why New England's going into man-to-man -man coverage against A.J. Johnson. As we suspected, that is a horse collar on Jessica Johnson. Wide receiver A.J. Johnson is shredding this New England secondary. They're going to have to change the coverage, double up on her. Johnson, an off-season pickup. First-year wide receiver coming in after the release of Ali Alberts. Johnson really doing well in this offensive system, and more importantly, developing chemistry with Jacinda Barkley. Now the extra point attempt handoff to Javille Thompson. No fake to Javille. They were trying the outside with Amanda Johnson, this time Jessica Johnson, able to deflect the pass. I like the play selection. It was a bad pass by Barkley. They tried to do a back shoulder. She was there, just a bad pass, threw it inside, got broken up by Johnson. You can see the New England offense now backed up after that personal foul call on Jessica Johnson. They will have a long field against a very stout Chicago defense. Looking forward to seeing if the rookie quarterback, Alex Drake, can answer Barkley's touchdown pass. A first and 10 ball at the 10 yard line. That is a fake handoff. Drake looking to keep the ball and getting destroyed. 
That was Kristen Morrison coming up again from the middle linebacker position. A lot of standing around by that front line of New England. Nobody blocking down the field. It showed there was nothing there for Alex Drake. Drake in New England hanging toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chicago thus far. A 12-7 ball game as we wind down first quarter play. A look at Kristen Morrison, who is really having a breakout night tonight. This is a second and seven play. That looks to be a bubble screen. And that is a way you get your player killed. Dominique Collins coming up from the corner position. That will officially bring us to the end of the first quarter with New England down 12-7. to seven. your favorite LFL players and teams and receive breaking news stories. Like the LFL's official Twitter page, twitter.com slash myLFL. Back to LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco. The New England Liberty hosting the Chicago Bliss. And right now the Liberty down 12 to seven. That is a design quarterback keeper. Alex Drake trying to get to the outside. Great open field tackle. That is the small statured corner, DeAndre Fry. Not sure about that call at all by Donnie Williams, the head coach. Third and long, third and seven. You got a rookie quarterback with a gun, and you call a quarterback draw. There was nothing there. You got to let her throw the football. I think part of that decision making has got to be the loss of Kristen Beckman early in the first quarter. They are out of options as it relates to the passing game. They have one option, a phase of Kai, and that's it for Alex Drake. She has to go to her, though. A fourth and three now. That is another draw play. They've had some success, although I'm not sure that's going to be enough for a first down. They're going to mark her short as Chicago takes over. Fourth and short, defensive coordinator and head coach Keith Hack brought everybody tight, and that was another bad play selection by New England. Nothing there. Chicago takes over the ball. I think if you're a New England fan, this has got to concern you. They are basically abandoning the passing game. In turn, what defensive coordinator for the Chicago Bliss, Keith Hack, is doing, he's converging five or six defenders in the box. With Beckman out of the game, you're 100% right. He doesn't think they can go on top of that secondary with a phase of A first and 10 from the New England 19. That is a handoff to the shifty running back, Javille Thompson. We talked about her in the pregame show, Bobby. Javille Thompson is an excellent backup for Christelle Harris. She sure is. They have three backs, actually. Tamar Fennell, who was an all-fantasy back back in when she played with Cleveland, is the third back. But Thompson is number two right now. This gives her a chance to show what she can do with the Ferrari out. A first and goal handoff to Javille Thompson. And Thompson looking very impressive on this drive. Outside blocking, good stock blocking outside. She reads the block, goes in the end zone. But New England, that's all blamed on their offense. If they can come up with a first down, they have two bad play selections. They give a short field to Chicago, and they take it in easily. That is an excellent point. In the game of the LFL, there's no punting. So it is absolutely vital that you move the ball offensively and not back up your defense the way New England has. It's kind of shocking. You have a quarterback with the arm strength of Alex Drake, and they don't let her use it. They don't throw the football down the field. You blink your eye, and the game is completely changed. It wasn't that long ago that New England was up 7-6, to six, and now Chicago on the verge of converting the extra point. That'll give them a 19-7 to seven lead. Mitch, you're 100% right. The mojo of this game is completely turned around. It was 7-6 New England at home, their first home game ever against the two-time LFL champions. And boom, just like that, it's 19-7 Chicago. Speaking of the number 19, that is all the yards Chicago needed to get a score. Getting back to our earlier point, if New England does not sustain drives, this could turn into a very long night for these fans. They're going to have to put the ball in quarterback Alex Drake's hands and let her throw the football. They have a phase of Kai. She's talented. She's 6'1". Just throw it high and let her go after it. First and 10 now. Ball at the New England 15 from the shotgun. Drake looking to the left side, looking for a phase of Kai. That'll fall incomplete. Great coverage again by Kim Perez. 
A great throw and delivery by Alex Drake right on the money. Aphasia Kai had it right in her mitts, but she dropped it. As I like to say, she has hands like feet, Mitch. Aphasia Kai, the opposite threat of Kristen Beckman. And a great target, as you said earlier, a six foot one frame for Alex Drake, but could not come up with it. A second and 10 now, ball remains at the 15 yard line. From the shotgun, Drake now a quick screen pass. Great open field tackling by Chicago. That was Dominique Collins from the corner position. They're just trying to get the ball right into Cruz's hand. She has that quick berth, but one-on-one -on -one against Dominique Collins. I'm going to take Dominique Collins all the time. Another criticism of this New England offense is the simplicity of its attack. We've heard it all season long. It is a very easy offense to figure out by defensive coordinators. You're 100% right. Before the game, we know it was going to be Kristen Beckman and Alex Drake. She's out. A phase guy came in, but Astrid Cruz, the running back, is not doing much right now. A third and 12 fakes the handoff. Looking down the field, has a phase guy. And she cannot come up with it. That is a crucial drop on a third and 12. Quarterback Alex Drake, a little bit late delivering the ball. Afeza Kai was open. She floated the ball up high, which is good, but she let Tamar Fennell come over and make the play. Say what you will about the offensive scheme here. Alex Drake is not looking very sharp tonight. She's not sharp right now, and you mentioned it last series. Here it is again. It might be four and out and giving the ball back to Chicago with another short field. This is as big as it gets early in a ball game. A fourth and 12, New England backed up at its own 12-yard line. That is Drake back to pass, has a receiver well short of the first down as Chicago now will take over on downs. Rookie mistake by quarterback Drake. You gotta get the ball down the field to the markers. We've got a timeout on the field. Chicago up 19 to seven. Warrior Black, the official eye black of LFL athletes. Back to second quarter action here in Manchester, New Hampshire. Bobby Huco, Mitch Mortaza. A first and 10 for a Chicago team that's up 19 to seven. Jacinda Barkley faking the handoff, now rolling right. Cutting back across the field, has an opening. And gets all the way down to the five yard line. That is Jessica Johnson on the tackle. I think New England's offensive line should watch this tape. Watch the offensive line Chicago stay with their blocks. They knew their quarterback was in trouble, but they stayed on their blocks, had active hands, punching a defensive lineman, and they created holes for the quarterback. A 14-yard run by Barkley. Getting the ball down to the New England five-yard line. As Barkley and crew go back to work, leading this one already by 12 points. This could put the game out of hand early. A handoff to Javille Thompson. And Thompson getting to the outside and extending Chicago's lead. Really shoddy tackling by New England. Sometimes that looks like they're trying to tackle by sound. Nobody wraps her up or does anything, lets her get in the end zone. Jessica Johnson, who's had otherwise a great first half, missing the tackle on Javille Thompson as Chicago now leads 25 to seven. I'll tell you what, Mitch, this is one dangerous quarterback. This is only her second game in LFL US, and she looks really, really good. Rolling out right, finding a receiver. That was way too easy. AJ Johnson having a great first half of football. What a free agent find from East Lansing, Michigan. They lost all fantasy wide receiver Allie Alberts last year, and Coach Hack finds A.J. Johnson. The line Johnson. is straight up on it. I remember what I told you earlier about standing on the outside so you can rip through. You got to remember that type of stuff. Come on, man. Coach Don Williams not happy with Rachel Murphy. Murphy subbing in a defensive end. This is a depleted roster based on all the injuries in the first half. New England is down to 10 active players, which is something you never want in the LFL. This game got ugly real quick. Just at the end of the first quarter was 7-6. New England already, it's 27-6 Chicago. And right now, New England's doing nothing to help themselves out. Previous Drake attempt going incomplete. Now setting up a second and 10. You could see the frustration. This offense has no rhythm right now. There's no fire in this team at all. You can see it in the huddle. You can see it on the sideline. 
and they came into this game fired up. Their first home game ever. Right now, they look confused, and they don't look like they really want to play. I think the roster situation will play big in this game because you've got a lot of players out of their natural positions, and that's a handoff to Astrid Cruz. No chance there. Tackled by Chantel Taylor. Chantel Taylor, one of the best I've ever seen in the LFL, coming off the edge, almost beheaded. Cruz right there. Chantel Taylor, Yashi writes, this defense, I'm going to tell you what, Chicago will be there at the end of the season. They have a lot of talent on this team. The quarterback looks rock solid. I'm looking forward to watching them. Chicago still has to face off against the Atlanta Steam, the other dominant team in the East. No disrespect to the Omaha Heart, but the class of the Eastern Conference are the Chicago Bliss and the Atlanta Steam. That is another handoff to Cruz. This time, Cruz gaining four yards, setting up a vital fourth and four. I think you're right. I don't see much of an offensive scheme here by New England. Coach Donnie Williams, it looks like they're just doing basic dive plays right now. This is something you can draw up on any playground. It's a shame that they are not trying to attack this defense that's now pinning their ears back and getting after the quarterback in the run game. A fourth and four, a little under three minutes remaining. Drake back to pass, has a receiver. A Fazekai, that'll be enough for a New England first down, a crucial first down conversion. That was a great route by a Fazekai, a basic hook route, but she got enough for the first down. She settled in behind the linebackers and outside the safety, and Drake delivered a great football. I hate to go back to the same point, but without Kristen Beckman, the Fazekai has really become the go-to. That's it. That's all they're going to. They're not thrown to their tight ends. They're not thrown to their backs. They're thrown to a Fazekai, and that's it. Now a first and ten for this New England offense. A score here makes this game very interesting. That is Cruz in motion, fakes the handoff. Rolling left is Drake. Great open field tackle. That is DeAndra Fry, five foot five, 105 pounds. And that will bring us to the two minute warning. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back for the final two minutes of football here in the first half. Mitch Mortaza, Bobby Huco, in a 26-7 ball game. New England driving now. Back to pass is Drake and trying to thread the needle. Not even close. That is Dominique Collins again in coverage. Alex Drake just doesn't look comfortable in the pocket. She's got happy feet. There was nobody there. She threw her right into double coverage. Should have been picked off. That was a look at offensive coordinator Derek Beasley, a former New England Patriot who's not had a lot of success in developing an offense here with the Liberty. From the shotgun, that's Alex Drake looking over the middle. Dangerous pass. And she's going to pay for it. That's Tamar Fennell. Give Drake some credit going after Fennell after that interception. Let's listen in. <laughs> You ever gone after a corner after an interception like that, Bobby? Yes, that's what you're supposed to do. If you throw an interception, you got to take care of whoever intercepted the ball on you. Tamar Fennell, one of the best DBs in the league. She was all fantasy, all fantasy running back, just a great athlete. You don't throw at her. The one person you stay away from is Tamar Fennell. Fennell, one of the most underrated secondary Whee! players in the history of the Whee! game, has bounced around with a lot of LFL Whee! franchises. Feels that she's finally found a home here in Chicago. That's Jacinda Barkley, a design keeper, and she will gain six yards on the carry. I really like the way she makes quick decisions. She looked for a quick post right there. It wasn't a design run. There was nothing there. She tucked it, saw the opening, and got five yards. A gain of six yards, now setting up a second and four. Ball at the New England 11. You can see Chicago in no hurry as they have a timeout remaining and now deep in the red zone. Barkley has this Chicago offense running like a well-oiled machine right now. She looks confident back there. A second and four ball at the 11-yard line. Barkley back to pass, has a receiver. Try to throw to the outside shoulder of Shabria Civilian. Give credit to Jessica Johnson in coverage. Coach Keith Hack, he said he wanted to get some work 
for Servillion at wide receiver. They know how A.J. Johnson can play, but they need somebody on the other side to be just as good as he is. Now a third and four. This New England defense has got to dig in here. They're already down 19 points. Certainly not an offense that can come back, so they've got to get a stop. Third and four, Barkley under center, dropping back to pass. Looking to the left flat. That should have been caught by A.J. Johnson. One of the rare drops by number 18. She throws a fastball. It's a hard football to catch. You have to get used to it. But that's two passes in a row that should have been caught. New England's defense has got to get a stop here. Again, down 19 points. Barkley facing a fourth and four. Getting it into the flat to A.J. Johnson. And Johnson this time holding on to it. And will pick up a first and goal for Chicago. Watch Barkley move in the pocket. A corner blitz from the outside. She comes underneath the Johnson. She, her eyes went deep first, came back underneath the A.J. Johnson. Just a solid play for the quarterback. And that is not a good look if you're a New England fan. They are already breathing heavy. This is a roster that's down to 10 active players with multiple injuries here in the first half. Anytime you see one of your best players on her knees, it's not a good sign. Now a first and goal, Jacinda Barkley looking to the end zone, finding a gap not shy of contact, and that'll be another Chicago score. I really like the way Barkley, when she sees a hole, she tucks it quick and gets in the end zone. Another touchdown for Chicago. I think New England's reality check just bounced, Mitch. Now 32 to seven. Certainly the folks up here with another team in Foxborough, not used to seeing their team get beat up like this. A horrible home debut by New England. We've got a penalty on the field. That is a delay a game on Chicago. It'll remain a one point conversion, but now backed up to the six yard line. It is simply amazing how this second quarter has been all Chicago. The first quarter, New England played good football. Like I mentioned, it was seven to six at one point in the first quarter. Now it's a complete blowout. Yeah, in case you're wondering, at the end of the first quarter, the score was 12 to seven. Now Chicago scoring an unanswered 20 points. They could add to that here. The extra point attempt, quick screen, nobody in front. An easy walk-in by Javille Thompson. Now 21 unanswered points. If that motherfucker run all the way across the field, go get the goddamn quarterback. Me to stay. No, what the f you stand for? Right. Who you hey, turn around here. Who the f are you covering? Nobody. Right. What the f you stand there? Don't listen to if she told you something stupid. No, don't no, listen. coach told me to stay. That. All right, so if there's a motion, it's I might no go every time. Apparently some dissension. As you could see, the New England defensive player saying she was supposed to stay outside. Coach Don Williams looking like a ravaged Rottweiler right now. Not happy at all. Wow, I'm not sure if that coaching technique is very effective. There was more F-bombs in one sentence I've ever heard in my life. When you're down 33-7, to seven, you're going to pull out all techniques, as Don Williams did there. Drake back to pass, looking down the field, an ill-advised pass. That was more of a punt. After all the hype for number 11, she is looking poor in the first half of this ball game. Not a good pass at all by Drake, but an equally less effective effort by a Fazekai, not even trying to go after the ball, or worse, break it up. She didn't even go after it. That is something you do not want to see from a young team. That is a mentality you got to get rid of early. You've got to have a better effort against the more elite teams like Chicago. And this is Drake under pressure again, chasing her down is Yashi Rice. The all fantasy defensive end and now losing her footing. Apparently there is a flag. This could be a taunting call on Yashi Rice, making a hand gesture over Alex Drake. That is indeed what Tommy Brow and his staff are calling. We don't see a lot of taunting calls in this league. No, you don't. And they're winning 33 to seven. I know this game's probably over, but the veteran, Yashi Rice, she can't do the hand gestures like that. Chantel Taylor got called earlier in the game, and here's Rice doing the same thing. Those were the two penalties that extended New England drives. We'll see if the Liberty can come up with anything here. That is a completed pass. 
Astrid Cruz gaining four yards. Cruz got hammered by Dominique Collins. Dominique Collins is becoming one of the strongest hitters as a cornerback that I've seen in a long time. That four yard completion now setting up a second and six. A little under 20 seconds and two timeouts for New England. Drake from the shotgun looking down the field, now checking down. That is a quick pass in the flat again to Cruz. This time Cruz gaining minimal yardage, but it does stop the clock. They need to take a couple shots here, Mitch. Go for the end zone. They need points before the halftime to have any shot at all getting back in this game. A third and four. Drake has the arm to stretch the field. Ball at the 20-yard line of Chicago. Big time pressure on the edge. Evading multiple rushers. Now Drake trying to make something happen. And met head on by Kim Perez. Kim Perez, watch this hit, bam! And that'll end any hope of any points for New England. That is a dejected Alex Drake heading into the locker room. And that'll bring us to halftime. Chicago up 33 to seven. Welcome back inside the booth of LFL Football Night here at halftime. Mitch Mortaza, Bobby Huco. Now, Bobby, we expected New England may struggle in this game, but now they're being dominated 33-7 to at halftime. It's really interesting. New England is controlling the clock, more time of possession, and more total plays right now, but that's only because Chicago has that quick strike offense. One play, bam, two plays, bam, they score quick. Now, Chicago's dominated across every aspect of this first half as far as offensively, but namely the total yardage. Chicago racking up 140 first half yards to 79 of New England. Unbelievable. They only faced one fourth down situation, and the story before the game was the quarterback, Jacinda Barkley. She's playing very pretty football, playing great, throwing the ball well and running well. I like the way she's going. She did have that one interception, but she accounted for a lot of the scoring here in the first half. Started right from the beginning. The first play from scrimmage, it was Barkley finding a streaking A.J. Johnson for 35 yards. Then Alex Drake in New England did respond with Jole Efezekai, a 15-yard completion and a score. Barkley responded again to that with A.J. Johnson on a 35-yard touchdown pass. Then it was Javille Thompson. We talked about her in the pregame show, subbing in for Christelle Harris with a pair of touchdown runs, one from six yards out, the other from five yards out. Right before the half to add salt to the wound, Jacinda Barkley on a one-yard touchdown run. That brought us to our halftime score of 33-7. to Now let's take a look at the first half stats. You'll see the only problem for Chicago is those three penalties they have and that interception you mentioned with Barkley, but Johnson made a great play on it. Other than that, rock-solid football by Chicago. We are down to a final 20 minutes of football. Get your chowder ready. The second half kickoff is next. Back for the final 20 minutes of football. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco. And after a touchback, New England has a long road ahead of itself, down 33-7. Not a great first half for Alex Drake. You see there, she had two interceptions, only eight out of 15. She needs to come out strong here in the third quarter. Eight. Now a first and 10. That looks to be Chicago jumping on the edge. This could be a free play for Alex Drake. Drake gaining five yards will await the call. Look like A.J. Johnson was lined up in the three-yard neutral zone. You have to have three yards between the ball and where you line up, and she jumped. That is indeed the call on Chicago. That'll set up a first and five at the New England 20. At some point here, the Liberty have got to dig in and fight back. Well, that's a good start right there. Five yards against the defense. Coach Hack doesn't like the call, but it was the correct call. Now it's first and five. Let's see something from New England. Right now, they have to show something. Coach Hack, you could see smiling. That is about the only time you'll see him smiling on the sidelines when he's up 33 to seven. Alex Drake and New England remain in the shotgun. A first and five from the 20, fakes the handoff. Look at the pressure coming off the edge by Chicago. Dominique Collins and Yashi Rice converging. 
Collins and Rice collapse the pocket. You see her stats right there from 2015. That is why she's all fantasy, one of the best to ever play the game at defensive end. Yashi Rice now seven years off and on with this Chicago franchise. One of the true veterans in the game. Sister to Simeon Rice, the longtime defensive end in the NFL. She worked a long time with her brother during the offseason for years to come up with an effective way to attack the quarterback, and it has worked. Second and ten now. Drake feeling more confident in the shotgun. That is Astra Cruz. That is a big-time collision. And DeAndre Fry clearly knocked out. Let's take a look at this. Oh, that is a vicious collision. And Fry being helped off the field. You never want to see that. Head to head, you saw she got knocked out immediately. I just hope she's all right. It looks like she is so far. We're going to get a report down on the field on DeAndre Fry. Meanwhile, New England goes back to work. Another draw play. That must be a three or four consecutive plays that they've run pretty much the same thing. During the offseason, I think Coach Donnie Williams has to get an offensive coordinator in here. Right now, there's no scheme. They're not scaring Chicago at all. There's no bootlegs. There's no play action, no nothing. I think you're assuming there's going to be an offseason for this coaching staff. The way this team is playing, I think you have to doubt that to some degree. There's got to be something happening. You're right. I agree 100%. They're losing at home. They're losing on the road. They're losing everywhere. Personnel being misused, a lack of personnel. Those are all very big questions for the offseason. Meanwhile, we've got a fourth and 13 here. Again, New England electing the throw underneath, well short of the first down. The way that Chicago secondary converges, you got to throw the ball past the sticks, past the first down marker. Again, Alex Drake delivers a nice football. She looks good in the pocket, but they just don't have the scheme right now, right? Even the coaching. It's fourth and 13. You got to get 13. You can't throw underneath. Jacinda Barkley in this Chicago defense up big already. They've got a strong running game, so you got to factor toward the end of this game. We could see a lot of Javille Thompson. Now a first and 10 at the New England 22. They're going to look to go to the air. That's a quick screen pass completed to Javille Thompson. A gain of about three yards. We haven't really spoken about her as much as we should. She is an outstanding athlete. She's got wheels. She's got strength. She is a heck of a backup for Christelle Harris. And I don't know that Christelle Harris, she had a very rough start in their opener against Seattle. I think you give her some reps here, considering you're only playing four games in the regular season. I actually agree with Coach Hack because she's taken a beating over her career. The more games you can give her off, the better, especially if you're going to go to the playoffs. That's a second and seven incomplete screen pass. Javille Thompson, who's looked good otherwise, dropping that one in the flat. I like the way Chicago's sticking with their offensive game plan. They came out here in the second half. They didn't shut it down. They're throwing first down, second down, moving it down on the field. They dropped the ball there, but I like the play selection. That is offensive coordinator Jim Bruner for the Chicago Bliss has developed a very balanced offensive attack. Certainly has the luxury he's never had before with a quarterback that can actually throw the ball in Jacinda Barkley. A third and seven play now. Barkley back to pass, nobody open. Great coverage by New England. Now taking off with it. What an open field collision. Barkley and Ephizikai. Let's listen in. You are not going to see a collision like that outside of Sundays. How about having a quarterback that can deliver a blow like that? We've got a television timeout. It's the Chicago Bliss up big. Don Joy, protecting LFL athletes and the game. Back to third quarter action of LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco. And a Chicago team driving that is up 33 to 7. Chicago has pretty much played mistake free tonight with the exception of those two penalties on Rice and Chantel Taylor. Hand off to Javille Thompson. And look at Thompson's speed to get to the outside. That'll be enough for a first down. You got to teach New England when to talk trash and when not to talk trash. They let her run for a first down and they start talking trash. Wow, that's a big call. 
That was a fourth and two first down conversion by Javil Thompson. That'll be negated on the holding call with Dina Fagiano backing up Chicago to a fourth and 12. We haven't mentioned Dina Fagiano all night because she's playing solid football. She's doing her job. That's the only mistake she made so far tonight. Fourth and 12. This is a golden opportunity for this New England defense to dig in and get a stop. For their confidence, for the team's confidence, and the fans' confidence, they need to stop right now, Mitch. That's a great point. At some point, you've got to start playing for some pride. You're at home. It's the franchise's first ever debut. Dig in, get a turnover. Now a fourth and 12. Barkley back to pass as the crowd comes to life. That is complete. Shabria Civilian, and still on her feet. What an opportunity lost for New England. The New England coaching staff, the offensive staff, and the quarterback should watch this play. It's fourth and 12. Where does Barkley deliver the football? Past the 12-yard mark, 19 yards while she's getting hit. What a clutch play by Barkley. Multiple opportunities for this defense to do something. But as you said, Chicago is simply outmatching them up front, especially with coaching. And now Jacinda Barkley coming up big here in the second half and most of this game. You're right. This is pretty much like a practice now for Chicago. They're playing good football, and New England's doing absolutely nothing. Now a first and goal. Jacinda Barkley again getting to the end zone. I am really impressed by this young lady's vision. Watch how quick she brings it down. She sees the hole there. She takes it up. Tessa Alexandria breaks her ankle trying to tackle her. What a move there by Barkley. Another super play. New England is simply outmatched by the class of athletes. And it's showing on the scoreboard as Chicago extends its lead 41 to 7. I think the New England trainer's coming on the field right now holding up a fork because this defense is done. And you gotta wonder how many of these defensive players for New England are playing out of position and how that factors into their scheme. You're right, they're playing with a depleted roster, a lot of players out of position. I kind of feel sorry for them right now. These girls are good athletes, but right now they're getting killed. Drake back to pass, rolling left. Now just lobbing it into the secondary. I'm not sure if that was intended for Astrid Cruz or someone else, but the two are not on the same playbook. Not at all. In fact, Cruz was open early. She slipped out of the backfield. She came in motion, slipped out. She was open early, but she did not get the football for Drake. Drake waited too long. The corner came over, and there's nothing there. We have very high expectations of quarterback play in this league, but we've got to factor in. We're dealing with a rookie quarterback in a new system with suspect coaching. Well, I think it comes down to a lot to the coaching because over the years, we've had great quarterbacks that play great as rookies. So it's not on Alex Drake. It's just he needs a better coach. Now a third and 12 play. Make that second and 10. A loss of two yards. Kenya McKeon, who we've not heard much about, but that's a young lady we have, Kristen Morrison. I think it's safe to say Chicago officially has a middle linebacker. A great middle linebacker. And look at the fire in Chicago. That's what championship teams do. They won two LFL titles. And here they could be they could be walking away right now. They're up 41 to 7, but no, they're playing on fire right now. On the other side, the New England offense once again finding itself in a third and long. Drake in the shotgun, looking to pass in the flat. No chance. Hop skipped it over to Kenya McKinnon. No chance at a completion there. Right now, this New England offense is, is playing like a kite without a tail. There's no continuity to anything. Third and 12, how many times we gotta say it? You gotta get 12 yards and they throw a two yard pass. Again, you gotta factor in, that's gonna be the offensive scheme and the offensive coordinator, namely Derek Beasley, formerly of the New England Patriots. You've gotta give your offense at least a chance of success here. Now here they are again, fourth and 12, you're 100% right. If we see a screen pass, they're gonna be some really irate fans tonight. They're not even gonna get the opportunity. Drake going down once again, Kristen Morrison. Morrison making an early ballot for all-star honors. Again, this is coaching. A quarterback, watch Michelle Angel in Dallas. She gets rid of the ball, she throws it down the field. Fourth down and long, you have to give your receivers a chance. If you take a sack, here we go again. Look how short the field is for Chicago. That was the point I was just gonna make. That was a six yard loss. And you could see the New England defense already breathing heavy. 
They've been on the field way too much here in the second half. Another good point. The defense is right now, that's how you separate teams. They don't like the way the offense is playing because they have to come right back on the field on defense. Barkley back to pass well over the head of Shabria Civilian. And that's Tessa Alexandria in coverage. That ball simply slipped out of the hand of Barkley. Servillian was open. She found a hole by the safety. Could have been a touchdown. Ball just sailed on Barkley. That's another good opportunity. You can see a little bit of disgust on Keith Hack's face. I'm sure in reflection of that last pass by Barkley. But this is a great opportunity. Live competition. The game is pretty much out of hand. And it's an opportunity to really develop Jacinda Barkley as a pure passer. Now a second and goal for this offense. That is a quick slant to Shabria Civilian. Civilian once again into the end zone. And Chicago now up 47 to seven. Just a great throw by Barkley, a quick post. Astrid Cruz, she was going backwards. She has to close on that ball quicker. They'll do that all night long. Good play all around by the Bliss again. I like the timing between Barclay and Shabria Civilian as well as A.J. Johnson. These are names that really aren't household names in the LFL, but you're starting to see a team in Chicago develop an identity. This will be a two-point conversion for Chicago. Barkley under center. Looking into the end zone, nobody there. Again, trying to take off now an ill-advised pass. I'm not sure what Barkley was thinking there. Keith Hack can't believe it. That is the one problem with Barkley. She tries to do too much. She took off running. She should have just lowered her shoulders and tried to get the score, but she tried to throw at the last minute. Just ill-advised, like you mentioned. You could see the disgust on Jacinda Barkley's face. She's still a young quarterback developing. Some of that decision-making, much like Alex Drake's, should develop. She played in Australia, but she never played in the U.S., and it's a totally different game, faster, stronger. This is a great development game for her. A first and 10 now for the New England Liberty. Again, much of the same. A simple handoff to Astrid Cruz, and that is not fooling anybody. It's almost a give-up play. It is a give-up play. Coach Hack is probably laughing right now. They've been doing it all night long. They never even have to adjust their defense to anything because they do the same thing over and over. That was a loss of a yard. I, I've got to start wondering how long they're going to keep Yashi Rice, Chantel Taylor, and even Kristen Morrison in this ball game as Chicago is up 47 to 7. That was second and 11. A lot of confusion. That is just ugly. I don't think I've seen an offense this inept in a long time. The only offense that was comparable, and I hate to say this, was Omaha. But that play right there, nobody blocked, nobody did anything. No, 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 no. Let the clock run out. Let it run out. Hey, let the clock run out. Let the clock run out. Coach Williams of New England wanting to get out of the third quarter. And that is Drake taking a big hit. Bringing us to the end of three quarters of action. It has been all Chicago, 47 to seven. Back to LFL football night. It has been all Chicago bliss tonight. Up 47 to seven against New England. As Alex Drake goes back to work on a key fourth and two. Handoff again to Astrid Cruz. And look at that Chicago defense. They fully anticipated number two was going to get the ball. This just comes down to desire. Who wants it more? Chicago obviously does. There's a three-yard cushion between the lines. Three yards, and you only need two yards. And they get in, all get in the backfield. You could see there is some barking going on inside that New England huddle. Clear frustration on both sides of the ball for this expansion franchise. A first and ten for Chicago. Faking the toss play, Barkley looking down the field, has a receiver, and just under through. That looked to be intended to Shabilia Civilian, deflected by Astrid Cruz. Servilian was open again, a great play selection, play action. It makes a DB Cruz step up one time. She was wide open in the end zone, just a bad pass by Barkley. Should have been six points. Finally, some ray of hope with New England. Although I'm not sure if Astrid Cruz wasn't completely lost and just put her hands up and got lucky. Yeah, that wasn't a great defensive play. That was a bad pass by Barkley because she was open in the end zone. Second and 10, now Barkley in the shotgun. 
Looking down the field, looking to check down now. Great pressure, finally. I'm using the word finally because we haven't seen anything from New England that's resembled a defense. That was Samantha Puckett with the pressure. That is great to see this late in the game that Puckett came up with a play like that. A lot of these players were dead. They don't want to play. Puckett wants to play. Regardless of the score, despite it being 47-7, to the New England defense has got to show some life. We've seen a little bit of it with Astrid Cruz on the previous play and then Samantha Puckett. That is what this team needs to build off of. They need players like that that have hard. They're getting killed right now, but they still are great players. A third and ten again down the field and again an open receiver. A.J. Johnson has officially arrived. What a great route by Johnson. They tried to jam her off the line of scrimmage. She ran right by the DB, wide open on a streak route. A great play by Barkley. Here we go again. This is an unbelievable night for A.J. Johnson. And what about the confidence of Jacinda Barkley? This is not a quarterback that came into the league with high praise as far as being a pure passer. To have this kind of success, albeit against New England, is got to play well to her psyche. She has great coaching with Jim Bruner, the offensive coordinator. You can see he's really done a job with her. She looks like a veteran LFL U.S. quarterback right now. This is a two-point attempt. Great dart. Look at the speed on that football. Granted, she put it to the inside instead of the outside, but you've got to get some credit to Jacinda Barkley and A.J. Johnson. Barkley looked like a wily veteran right there, looked off the safeties. They thought she was thrown right down the middle. She came back underneath, outside, to A.J. Johnson. A dejected Don Williams, and he should be. This is a horrible product that they've put on the field tonight. Offensively, just in shambles, and defensively, completely disorganized. A first and ten now. Another handoff to Astrid Cruz. I could not have seen that one coming. This offense is very deceptive, and if you're sensing a sense of sarcasm, that's what I'm delivering, folks. I am speechless right now. This is the worst offensive scheme, I think, since I've been involved with the LFL. And they're doing straight handoffs every play. It's almost like they're trying to get Cruz killed. That or trying to run out the clock. Somebody needs to tell them they're not the team up 55-7. to seven. They're the team down. You have to have the same mindset like Chicago does. They scored 21 points unanswered in the second quarter. Why can't New England do it right here in the fourth quarter? That's the mindset you have to have, and they don't have it right now. No, this is a give-up mindset. And if I was Astrid Cruz, I'd be really irate here. You are calling dive right, dive left, and laying me to be slaughtered. It all starts at the top. The coaching staff have to have, to have confidence in their players. And the players obviously have no confidence right now, I think, because the coaching staff hasn't given to them right now. Like you said, they're giving the ball to Cruz with no blocking, no scheme. How do you expect them to succeed if you don't coach them right? A bigger concern, me as a player, and if I'm a quarterback, the leader of this franchise, or the running back in Astrid Cruz, when those plays are called in, I'll refuse to run them at some point because I don't want to give up as an athlete. So why are you giving up as a coach? Let me tell you, they have some good athletes. Of course, Alex Drake, Tessa Alexandra, Kristen Beckman. They've got good players, but they need to be set in the right direction. Now a fourth and ten. This New England offense has had no luck with long yardage conversions. And if this plays out the way it has all game long, Chicago's going to have another short field. Alex Drake has got to find something better than a dive play with Astrid Cruz. Fourth and ten, Drake lining up in the shotgun. And we've got a penalty. Guess what? This will be a delay a game. This offense... I think we're out of negative adjectives, and you can hear the crowd booing now. They're also a little upset about this. This might be the only time I've seen a crowd do a standing boo. It's usually a standing ovation. They're standing boos tonight. And what's worse, this is their home debut as a franchise, and you would have thought they played with a little more pride. There's an interception again. That is Drake's third pick, and Tamar Fennell getting it into the end zone, rubbing salt on the wound of New England. Just a poor pass by Alex Drake, way behind the receiver. And again, she's targeting Tamar Fennell, one of the best to 
ever play a defensive back. You don't throw her away. That's going to happen all the time. She's going to learn. She's young, but she sure learned tonight. That pass looked to be behind Efezuki and intercepted on the deflection by Tamar Fennell. So I'm not sure you could put that all on Drake, but an ill-advised pass as Chicago continues to roll. Don Joy, protecting LFL athletes and the game. Back to LFL football night here in Manchester, New Hampshire, where the home team is down big, 61-7, to with Chicago now lining up for a two-point conversion. Barkley under center, looking over the middle. Great connection with Servillian, and that will extend Chicago's lead to 63-7. Really got to hand it to offensive coordinator Jim Bruner again. Who did he target on that? Number two, Astrid Cruz. He knows that she's so tired from running the ball pretty much every play. You got her one-on-one -on -one against one of your top receivers. Just throw it to her, and that's what happens. And I think that's the tough takeaway for New England when judging New England in this game. How much of it is poor execution and poor play calling, and how much of it is just being a depleted roster and physically spent? Well, that's it. I mean, I talked to the coaches about that. They should be out there recruiting. If you lose players for injury or whatever reason, you got to bring more players in. A first and 10 from the shotgun. That looked to be a lot of miscommunication. Drake's still up. Chantel Taylor. Taylor and Yashi Rice really having a hell of a ball game. They're just licking their chops right now. Nobody's blocking on the front line of New England. They're going right after Alex Drake and getting her almost every time. That was a loss of a yard on the sack. Not that it matters at this point. This is one of those games, much like a couple weeks ago, when we saw the Omaha Heart get dismantled. You take this game film and you start a bonfire with it. Keep the first quarter, you're right, throw the rest in the trash or put it on fire. And that's what the oddity in this game, New England actually was competing in the first quarter if we rewind the tape, at one point in this game, they were up 6-7. to seven. Keith Hack was on the sideline totally upset. We thought it was going to be a game, but it actually turned into a blowout. Kristen Morrison, one of the bright spots, alongside A.J. Johnson for this Chicago Bliss. They're two of the reasons. I mentioned it earlier. I really think Chicago can go all the way this year and compete with the Seattles and everybody because they go out and recruit players like this. Kristen Morrison is a beast at middle linebacker. Going back to your earlier point and again your recruiting point, that is an excellent job that's done by Chicago year in and year out. They lost a number of veterans in the offseason. And what did they do? They went out and got some absolute beasts on both sides of the ball. They brought people in from Australia. They, they are not satisfied just with winning. They want to win championships. You could see Chicago, despite being up 63-7, to seven, still getting after Alex How Drake. How is that not a god flag? How is that not a god flag? Come on, man, before somebody get hurt. Nobody saw that How the is that not a flag? You gonna get somebody fucking hurt. Coach Donnie Williams, he is livid right now. They're worried about Chantel Taylor throwing down Alex Drake. I don't know if that was late. I think the officials would have called it if it was late. A fourth and 10 from the 15. Drake looking to pass, and that is intercepted. Kristen Morrison taking it to the house. And just about anything that can go wrong has gone wrong for New England. This game has turned into a horror movie for Alex Drake. Her last two drives have been picked off and taken in for six. Pick six on the last two drives. Unbelievable. She threw into coverage. Her vision has been so poor tonight. Kristen Morrison was directly in front of Astrid Cruz, and she threw right to Morrison. I think she's shell-shocked right now. I, I think that was a natural reaction not to look where she's throwing, just throw it. And nobody was open except Morrison. Those are horrible numbers for a very heralded quarterback in Alex Drake. And now she's got her team down 69 to 7. Jacinda Barkley back to pass on the extra point. Wide open, Amanda Johnson. 
Where is the secondary, much less a defense for New England? Is there any white towels out right now? This is just, this is pure ugly right now. 70 to seven, and they're not letting up. If this was a boxing match, they'd end it. If it was a racehorse, they'd shoot it. This is one of the worst performances I have seen next to maybe a couple Omaha debuts. I kind of feel bad right now for quarterback Alex Drake. I mean, she stays in there, she keeps taking snaps, but it's gotta be horrible for her. That is another draw play to Astrid Cruz. And about six of the Chicago defenders saw that coming. There's a little frustration from number two and you can't blame her. They are literally leading her to be slaughtered every play. I can't believe there's no other offensive plays being called. They turn around and hand a ball off to Cruz every play, it seems like. Cruz lost three yards and that will take us to the two minute warning. Chicago up 70 to seven. And tonight, we've got Coach Don Williams mic'd up. You mean to tell me you're gonna let that motherfucker mush you down there like that and you ain't breaking that face right now? You mean to tell me you're gonna allow that motherfucker to do what she done and you didn't come out here and try to break her neck and even you can't find her, find her teammate and break her neck for what the she done you down there? You mean to tell me you ain't got that kind of evil streak in you? I would be, I would, I would literally hike the ball and punch that in the goddamn face. Are you crazy? Don't ever let anybody do you like that. Coach Never Donnie Williams really upset like at Rachel Murphy. She got hit after the play. Chicago's known to do a couple dirty things now and then. He's pretty much just saying in his own way, you better fight back. It may be a poor approach, but I like the message of fighting back and not being bullied regardless of the score. Now a second and 13 for Alex Drake in New England. Another handoff again to Astrid Cruz. And Cruz not getting anywhere. That is Kristen Morrison again on the tackle along with Tamar Fennell. Kristen Morrison is like a kid in a candy store right now. They're turning around, handing the ball to Cruz, and they're not blocking Morrison. She has a free shot on Cruz every play. A third and 12 now. It looks like New England is content with just running out the clock and getting out of here. It's unfortunate that this performance is happening in front of their own home crowd in the franchise debut here in Manchester, New Hampshire. From the shotgun, Alex Drake looking to pass, big pressure, and just lobbing it out of bounds. That is the first right decision that Alex Drake has made all night. They came with serious heat off the edge. They brought the corners. They brought the house after Drake. And you're right, that's the smartest thing she did all night. Just throw it away. But here we go again. Fourth down and 12. That was Kristen Morrison again applying the pressure. Whether it's tackling Astrid Cruz for a loss or chasing down Alex Drake, number seven has had quite the night. I am really impressed with this entire Chicago defense. The corners, the safeties, everybody played great. Of course, a defensive end, Rice and Chantel Taylor, just an all-around great effort. A fourth and 12 now for this inept New England offense. Nobody open, and you could see Alex Drake just disgusted by the whole thing, just throwing it away. And you're out of options at this point. Mitch, you made a great point. For your home debut, your first game ever in New England, you want to show your crowd something, how you play football, and you lose by 70-7 to seven right now. And Chicago taking over, content to just take the victory formation and get a 70-7 to seven win. Jacinda Barkley, part of several players that had a great game here tonight. She's got to feel really good getting back on the plane to Chicago. Great game for her, great game for Coach Hack. They're getting ready for Atlanta. You know that's gonna be the big showdown, but she showed me something tonight. Chicago next returns home next week, as we said earlier, to take on the Omaha Heart. And then they finish the season at Toyota Park against the Atlanta Steam. That is a game that everybody has circled in the Eastern Conference. Mitch, I'm really looking forward to that game. Jacinda Barkley, her first game was against Seattle, the champs. She played good, they didn't win the game, but she has developed so much since that game. And you got Dakota Hughes on the other side, that's gonna be a Donnybrook. I cannot wait for that game. Both Chicago and Atlanta purposely build their teams in the offseason, knowing that the two are gonna face each other at some point in the playoffs. 
The only thing for Chicago, though, Mitch, they're going to be heavy favorites next week against Omaha. You don't want to get too complacent. You know, they scored 70 tonight. They might score a lot next week also. But you got to get ready to play one of the best teams I've seen in the LFL, Atlanta. Give credit to Chicago. They did exactly what they were supposed to do against an expansion team. Absolutely kill them 70-7. to And that'll bring it to the end of LFL football night here in Manchester, New Hampshire. For Bobby Huco, this is Mitch Mortaza, and we will see you next week on LFL Football Night.